Welcome, my name is Sumner. Uh, I am solving Advent of Code. Today is day 11. Okay, we're a minute out. Oh, nice. So you're uh, BJ Sebastian doing it in Node.js this year. Awesome. Yeah, I am doing it in Python. So um, yeah, this is... Uh, this is my Python starter code. It's fairly extensive at this point, and I'm hoping it pays off. Um, if it doesn't, well, oh well. I mean, that's par for the course for me being slow. All right, um, let me adjust the chair. We'll get ready. So, Floor, empty seat, okay. Number of occupied seats adjacent to their given seat. This sounds like actually interesting. So one of the eight positions immediately up, down, diagonal, okay. If a seat is empty, it becomes occupied. This is like Conway's game of life. Seat is occupied for or more adjacent to it. The seat becomes and four if it's occupied and four more or more seats adjacent to it are also occupied, the seat becomes empty. Does not change. The floor never changes, seats don't move, nobody sits on the floor. After one round, it's this. Okay, so this is chaos stabilizes and once people stop moving around. Okay, so uh, I guess this is the initial layout. So okay, so let's see how to read this in. Honestly, that's probably fine. Um, so. Okay, um, and then RC if R less than greater than zero dot uh, yield. R minus one, C minus C minus uh, C minus one and C plus one. C. So these are just all the adjacencies. Um, Less, uh, less is if it's less than the len of lines, then we do all of this except for we do a plus, and then line zero. 
<coughs> two is two. I think these need to be minus one. Uh, then we do Okay, so let me just get rid of this, some of this stuff in here. Line 31. Okay, so those are all the adjacencies. If at R, C, if it's occupied if num o equals zero then equals occupied if num o greater than or equal to four That's fine. So I have a little bug with the indices.
Okay, so I have an index out of range error, which is annoying. Oh, it's this one. Shoot. Um. This is not a good day, guys. Too slow. Well, clearly, this didn't work.
Wait. Um. Let's see. So that looks right. No, that, wait. Every seat simultaneously. Hmm. Yeah, so they're all full initially. Then a bunch of people get up and leave. Okay, that looks right. Let's see, so that's good, that's good, this is good, but then everyone leaves. What the frick? Crap! Uh, <laughs> um, oh, it's all zero. It's always zero. Oh, wait, no. Um, Oh my gosh. Let's just see if this works. Hmm. Okay, clearly not. Hmm. Wait, why is this three? Oh my gosh! I know exactly why. This is because... I bet this is 
a search. Oh, wait, no. What? Uh, let's see, where's my... Okay, so what is going on here? Okay. Uh, scroll up faster, 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 faster. Let's see here. What is going on? Uh, okay. One zero, one one, zero one. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. I'm double counting everything. Ten is wrong. Welcome back. Congratulations, by the way. Um, this is not going so hot for me. Oh, once people stop moving, you count 37 occupied seats. Um, return count. Um, So Prev is this thing. Why is it 31?
I wonder if I'm... S okay, so R minus 1, C plus 1, that's already handled. This one isn't handled, maybe? Maybe this one isn't handled? R plus 1, C minus 1? Um, one zero, okay. You know what? Um, let's just thirty two. Why is it? Oh, my gosh. Let's see here. I'm assuming that this just totally doesn't work if I do. Yeah, I mean, that can't, I mean, that's probably not right. Let me just submit it anyway. Yeah. Um, What the hell? Okay. <clears throat> Let's add these back. <laughs> um, that'll guarantee that I have everything. Back to 31 for some reason. So let's just check my indices. This is probably where it's... So... list of all the adjacencies at 3.3. Three. Two, three, four. Shoot. Why is it returning itself? It's returning itself. What an idiot. Oh, this literally right there. Oh, this should be C. C is greater than zero minus one yield. Yep, there we go. That's my issue. Incompetence, in frickin' competence. Let's get rid of that IO cost. Maybe. There we go. Well, that was terrible. Um, oh, crap. <laughs> Leftmost empty seat would only see one empty seat.
Okay, so... So basically, the way this this works is we need this functionality. Um, except for now. Now what we need to do is, this is five, but, so how does the diagonal work? Okay, so it's just going on the diagonal as well. So then I have to change this adjacencies. Um, And then I'll just trace trace the ray. Um, and then uh, dot. No, yeah, so, okay, so this is going to be a list now. If that's the case, okay, so So if there's something uh, here, range R minus one. Uh, two. R is greater than one, then yield range R. Okay, so that shouldn't. Ninety five. That seems fine. Uh, 
Um, is it not? Oh, it, it returned to 97 for the row. Interesting. Oh, no, this is this is totally wrong. This is C. Oh, my gosh. There we go. At least that won't. Well, maybe it will. I hate these indices. Freaking annoying. Number of rows. Okay, so, so, um, if C is less than or equal to C minus two, yield R X. So this is the this is the columns. Oh, there we go. And then this is C. So, okay, the column, it's the same row, but a different column, C plus one to the end, and this is up to C. Okay, I think that's correct now. Down. So that should be, this should be R greater than or equal to one X C R up should be this um, up is basically down but whatever um, C is greater than equal to zero and B equal to zero. Um, column A minus equals one, B minus equals minus equals one. Um, row call yield dx, dy, diag, um, one, 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 negative one, one, negative one, negative one. There we go. I don't actually know if this is infinite looping or not, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, it sure seems like it. Maybe I should run the test. Okay, so
Oh, um, a less than or equal to uh, less than less than R and B less than C. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It was infinite looping in that while loop. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, having to, it, <laughs> um, having to program Conway's way of life would have definitely helped me on this. I just totally screwed that up. Okay, so I, I don't think I'm trapped in this infinite loop anymore. So the trick is finding where the actual, like, is this print I? Let's just print I there. Okay, so we're, we're going through this. We just aren't reaching steady state. Did any other rule get added? Five or more visible seats. Oh, yeah, okay, so the other rules still apply. Never mind, okay. Given the same starting layout. So clearly this is this is not right. If I greater than 10,000 break, print, let's, not, let's just do one, honestly. So it looks like it's just oscillating. Oh. Still just oscillating. Okay. Okay, so ray and rays. Let me just Oh, frick. Um, so left has to be C comma O negative one minus one. R has to be R negative one, negative one, I think. Let's just look at here. So it's including itself, C minus one, R minus one. Yeah. Okay. Then we get rid of that. We get rid of this, because that's an intense operation. We get rid of that, we get rid of that. Do we get to steady state anywhere close to a reasonable time? This is the question. Or are we getting to stable state? You know, that's the other question. Are we just oscillating still? Well, we're still oscillating. Wonderful. Exactly what I wanted. Let's see. Okay, so. I think I need that. 
you know, if I if I did it right. 15, is that right? <laughs> Lol, no. Okay. Um, at least I'm getting to steady state. Um, steady state is, is slightly better than... Hmm... Let's see here. By the way, thank you, you and Jean, uh, in in chat. I appreciate the encouraging words, but I do want to finish this because this is freaking annoying. Um, so, so okay. So the, these rays have to be what the problem is, right? Like, there's no way that there's any other problem. Famous last words, right? Okay, so let's just look at this. Um, okay, so from zero, 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 one, zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then one, zero. Two, okay, so all the way down this way. And then there's this one, 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 two, all the way to nine, nine. And then a bunch of empty ones, which is fine. So then it should be the case that all of them are empty. What sort of numbers am I getting for this? Mm, let's do this, let's do that. Uh, I mean, they seem reasonable. I feel like, okay. Let's just print off at five comma five. the heck oh I see um whatever five six seven eight nine Five, four, three, two, one, four, five, three, five. Wait, so this is going from five, five, so then four, five. Why am I so freaking bad at indices? Yeah, I type Ohea in code just to as a breakpoint so that it'll it'll guarantee to error, and it's uh, ASDF on my keyboard keyboard layout. Um, it's the equivalent of ASDF. Uh, five six five four four six three five. Wait, this seems kind of sus. Why is it going from six five four three two? Did I do something retarded? Well, I mean, clearly I've done something stupid, but I, uh, what have I done? 
Um, wow, this is pretty bad, guys. Okay, so that looks right. Okay, congratulations. I did one of these correct. Um, row five, call four, all the way down to zero. So that looks right. Um, is down correct? So this is the row minus one. That seems fine. So the suggestion in chat is look at this one. Which does seem kind of sus. Like that one. No, that one's right. Like that one looks totally fine. Um, I, I do think it is a diagonal one. So four, six, so. Yeah, what the heck is going on here? So diag negative one. So that should go up and to the right. So five, five to four, six. No, 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 this should be, this should be, this is the, this is the row. This is the column. So that, no, it should go up to the right. So why is this going to the left? Because it should go four six, it should go five five, four six, three, I hate my life, guys. I've done that twice now on multiple different problems. That's retarded. Oh, it gave me none. That's good. Um... Four, three, two, one. Oh, wait, it didn't give me the zero. Oh, but it's at nine, so that's fine. Um, this one didn't give me, nope, it's at nine. Okay, that's fine. So let's see here. What are these numbers? Like, what the frick? Oh, it's that, 15, dang it. Um. Yeah, like why is it giving me 15? Okay, so I'm guessing it's just another stupid error here. Um, oh wait, maybe I should make this dy, this dx. That shouldn't change things, because, like, as long as I'm consistent, right? Um, oh, and I guess it, it does depend on it being square. Hmm.
So it's going up to the to the right. This one's going down to the left. or something. Mm, I think this this seems fine though, now that I fixed it. Unless it's supposed to be, this should go out of bounds, right? There's, there's not. That, that's not gonna work. Yeah, exactly. So let's go back to debugging this, I guess. Well, clearly that's wrong. That's not what it's supposed to look like. So that's what it's supposed to look like there. After round one, all the seats are full and three, five, bunch of stuff. After round two, it's supposed to look like this. Wait, that is what it, no, wait, why is this one not crap? This one's still occupied. Everything else is right. So what gives? So it's, it's this. So it's two, nine that I care about. Um, oh, I'm just, I'm just bad at coding at this point. Uh, let's see. That didn't, wait, where is all my, why is it printing so much? Oh, I'm, I'm just bad at, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so. So that's looking, um, so this is, wait, this is looking to the left. This is looking down. No idea which of the ones those are. Um, this is looking, what the, that's not right. No, that's totally, this is going up. But why is it eight? Should be nine. No, oh, no, that's a diagonal. This is a diagonal. Wait, where is the one that is just one nine? Or zero nine? I'm missing up. Up is wrong. So one of these is wrong. Um, wow. I thought that I, whatever. Um, I think that's it. Um, let's do that. Let's do this. Still 15. Um, these ones minus one? Yeah, let's probably let, nope. 
Well, at least I'm not uh, over. Is it equal to R? Less than or equal to C. Okay, um, well, let's print this range. So it's obviously some edge case on the on the sides, right? Like that's got to be my issue here. That looks fine. All these look fine again. What's the other one? A zero nine that I haven't done? Okay, back to, let's see here. Well, if anything, this is going to be a real interesting, interesting uh, exploration into debugging techniques. Um, bad ones, apparently. Okay, so this is correct now. So yay, we've gotten past part, we've gotten past this. That is the correct second state, or third state, I guess. What's then, so I guess if I, if I do this, then, well, clearly that's wrong. Good grief. Wait a second, did I not, did I? I think I just didn't read the instructions right. Um, first suit in each of these. Uh... First, so really it's it's this thing. There we go. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Well, I can't be worse than 3,000 or like uh, uh, more. Uh, where's crap? Where's my. Okay, yeah, so I'm about 3,000. 
whatever. Okay, um, okay, so, um, if anybody's still in chat, I, I assume there's a few people. Uh, what I'm going to do now is have a little bit of a, um, uh, a session where I complain about how badly I did, because this was a pretty terrible result. Um, and then I'm going to explain, explain what I, what I was doing, what I was thinking, um, and how you shouldn't solve this problem. Um, first of all, though, congratulations to, oh, holy crap. How am I still third? Well, they're, they're pretty far ahead of me now. Uh, yeah, congratulations to, um, Kelly, who's in chat. Um, good job. Obviously, much, much, uh, much, um, much better than this. Uh, so, yeah, what happened? Um, <sighs> yeah, let's just say I should have spent more time on the adjacencies. I was trying to be kind of cute here. I was a little bit too cute. Okay, so first of all, um, what is this problem asking us? Basically, the, the, you have to evaluate um, the given floor plan effectively and figure out which seats will be occupied given the current state. Um, so this is, this is your current state, everything's empty, and then people just like show up. And so the key here is that all of the things are evaluated at once, like all the rules are evaluated at once. So you have to use the old state. You can't like modify it as you go or else then you'll, you'll end up with a situation where you'll mark this was occupied and then this one, for example, might not get occupied. This is, this is basically Conway's game of life with a couple of extra different rules. Conway's game of life, uh, it may actually just be straight up Conway's, but I think Conway's has a little bit different rules for, um, the terminology is living and dying. And I guess Conway's game of life doesn't have dead squares, like empty squares. So that's something that is a feature of this, of this uh, problem. So basically what you do is you look, th there's the first challenge is to figure out which squares are adjacent. And that's where I really sucked. I like absolutely just couldn't do that correctly. So what I tried to do was this adjacencies function, which is a generator function and it yields all of the adjacencies. The problem is, A, I just did, a, did, did them wrong. I rushed it too hard. B, they weren't even like correct or like they were duplicates. I, I like just duplicated stuff, which is why I was over counting the number of squares that were like occupied next to us. Um, next to the given each given seat. So anyway, so the, th the, the thing after, so you basically then have to keep applying these rules. The rules are basically like listed right here. If, if it's empty then, and there's no occupied seats adjacent, it becomes occupied. If it's occupied and there are four more seats adjacent, four or more seats adjacent to it that are occupied, it becomes empty. Otherwise it doesn't change. So. Um, that's what this part is doing. This part was kind of the easier part, <laughs> honestly. Um, and then eventually it's going to get to a stable state where applying the rules gets you the same result. And that's this, what this is doing. It's kind of a mess, but it's just going through everything and checking if it's equal. And then if it, uh, if it, is all equal so if it's not not equal then i just count all the hashes which is all the occupied seats so okay so back to this this adjacencies function um this was kind of a disaster let's clean this up and make it not suck um before i do let me just commit this Okay, so uh, let's see here. 
the, the the unfortunate thing with adjacencies in general is that you have to deal with whether or not like it'll be in bounds. So that's what I was trying to do with this guy and with this guy and with this guy here and with this here. Um, if I if I make this not a set, I think this fails again, right? Yeah, just infinite loops. So the issue that I have is that basically, like, I just did it wrong. Like I was yielding the same thing multiple times, like here, because it, you know, it's the it's a converse, it's the inverse. So I honestly think, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm, I'm returning three more than I need to, because there's, or four more. There's only, there's only eight adjacencies, right? The up, down, left, right, and then the four corners. So honestly, I think hard coding them would just be totally fine. Um, if r less than or less um, greater than zero. So this is just saying like, can we go b back up? Um, keeping this as a generator function is fine here, as long as you just do this right. Um, but it's r minus one comma c. So same up, up a row, but same column. And C, C is greater than zero. And then C less than. And let's pull in the definite, these two definitions here, um, C and R. These are just the length of the lines. You know, this was stupid, whatever. Uh, let's clean this up. We don't really need, I'm, I'm deep copying lines so many times that that's unnecessary. Also, part two is just hecka slow. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, I honestly think that hard coding the, you know, eight options is better than whatever behemoth this was because um, it, it's not good. It just wasn't good. Um, our and then, okay, so this is this is all of the things above it. Um, then, left and right, if um, R greater than, if C greater than zero, you have the same row, but column minus one. If C less than C, then C plus one. Oh, that's good. See, it's just like these this, these sorts of issues, right? Where it's just like super freaking easy to mess up your indices, you know? Uh, wait, what's going on? Why is this now not working again? Is it this? Is it these? It's those. Is it minus one? Yeah, so I need the C minus one, that's important. Um, left, right, below. Ah, yeah, 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 okay, so, so um, Kelly and chat just mentioned down here in part two, I really can just do this exact same thing for all of these as well. So we'll get to that and yeah, yeah, that would have been uh, definitely saved me a significant amount of time and mainly a significant amount of headache, which is really the, 
a key here. Um, okay, I think this seems a little bit, a lot cleaner actually. Um, so once I, you know, update the indices here, yeah, whatever behemoth I decided to do, that was a bad idea. So, so lesson number one, just don't do what I did there. Um, whatever you do. That was my answer, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so another way of doing this instead of um, is kind of doing what what Kelly has mentioned in the chat and have a an array of like tuples of directions. So basically, I'll I'll annotate these since you know I'm not going for speed. Um, um, so if one. Zero. And then plus one will be to the right. So this is just um, uh, delta row delta call. And then uh, negative one, negative one, top left, and then top right would be positive one. Uh, bottom left and then bottom right is this. Note that like, so it's kind of backwards, right? Like the, the row, the, the top row is the is index zero. So going, increasing in on the row column makes you go down. Columns are easy. They're just the correct direction. And then here for D and DERS, um, if, if R, R, D, dy dx r minus plus dy is if zero less than or equal to that less than r and zero less than or equal to c plus dx less than c uh, yield Yield that. Um, yeah, so that just does all the checks um, in line and it works. So this is obviously the, the cleanest way of doing this. Man, I really overcomplicated that and just was like, yeah, code, 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 all the things. And that clearly bit me in the ass. Um, okay, let me annotate this. Cause this is, again, this is the first, this is, this is a really annoying problem. So I might as well like explain it well for future three people who actually watch it. Um, okay, so, and return all of the no call tuples representing the adjacent and uh, adjacent cells effectively. So here we can get rid of a cast to a set. And this is already, it seems faster. Yeah, part one is effectively instant now, so that's good. Um, okay, so what's going on in part one? First of all, we 
initialize previous, we initialize i. We make sure to increment both of those at the bottom um, and reset it to the new. And the new is basically it's gonna it's gonna contain the state, the new state. So this is the old state, and then the new state will be this guy here. And to figure out what the new state is, you have to look at the old state and determine if it's uh, uh, occupied or not, basically. So the first step is to iterate through the rows and columns. This is literally the only thing that went OK. <laughs> um, iterating through these indices was fine. And it's a good thing that I did the indices, because you need them to index into both previous and new. And then if it's either empty or taken, so that's what this guy is doing here. It's just checking you to see if if your seat is either empty or it's if it's uh, occupied. Then you basically have to count all of the seats that are around it and see whether or not they're occupied. And really, yeah, this is fine. This is fine because you know this index. It's going to be. We'll just assume that it's constant time. It's not. You know, it's not it's not inexpensive, but it's fairly inexpensive. So, so that's why we this adjacency is really is critical. If you get the adjacencies wrong, you're going to count the number of like occupied seats wrong, and then you're this is going to be wrong, and then you're going to get this. This will be an infinite loop because it won't ever end and come to a steady state, and you're screwed. Like me. So welcome. You're in good company. And this is just an implementation of the rules. This cell is a seat that is or not. Oops. Um, count the number of occupied adjacent seats. Four more occupied seats in this case, then we, we evacuate that. So um, I actually wonder, can I do if can I just do this? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if I could do that actually. I really so okay, so what I didn't know was if you can do deep copy comparisons, and apparently you can. Or deep comparisons. Eight, eight, eight equals so so honestly writing this for loop wasn't the worst thing but this is much cleaner here then we are at steady state the steady state is just you apply the rules and it just keeps giving you the same thing which is this check here and then this is just kind of some fancy string stuff. I don't know, this is just, it, it worked. It was kind of dumb, but it was effective. Basically it's doing a for loop, c compressing the, the list together and then combining the strings, it's whatever. Okay, moving on, um, that was part one. The biggest thing that went wrong was the adjacency list, so that's going to be a common theme because that's basically what went wrong down here as well. So part two is is basically the same as part one, except for now instead of looking at your adjacencies, you actually look at all of the directions and find the next the seat. So if, for example, you have a situation like like this where there's no seat here. You would look all the way over here to find that there's a seat that's occupied. Um, so here, for example, you only look to you only see that that uh, that that you only really care about this seat. If you're looking, if you're at this seat, you only care about this seat, and it's unoccupied, so it doesn't count towards your occupation. Um, hey, they're social distanced. Okay, so my 
idea was basically to create these rays out of out of the current one to f and basically then track along the array and find the first occupied seat. I actually didn't really read the problem well enough to understand what I was doing, but whatever. So the, the trick to this is to not do what I did, which was to have a terrible time with indices. The trick is to do what Kelly in the chat has mentioned and do a step function dx dy or really I should do dy dx which is a row call and then basically the idea is to do exactly what I did for diagonals except you know all the time um, <laughs> So I'm going to make this a generator function. Generator functions are kind of nice because you don't have to maintain the accumulator yourself. And then basically we're going to use it like, I think I can actually yield from here. Map list step um, dy dx or dy dx in and then diags or ders. Well, first of all, I have to figure out what's, okay, so let's just, let's just print this. Oh, whoops. Um, oh, oh, that's the problem. Dy dx and are ders dy dx or yeah, they're dy dx. Seems like it's promising. So I actually think this will work. Well, no, okay. Um, Cause it is a generator, so that should just work, right? Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay, perfect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the ders, um, yeah, definitely thank you to, um, I don't know how to actually say, like, Kelly, I don't actually know how to say your, like, username. Anyway, the, doing it with a nested for loop sounds pretty ugly. Like, what I did down here is pretty ugly as well. Um, this is what I did initially for doing the diagonals pro lemur. So, um, <laughs> you're, we're, we're not, we're not that far, far away from one another on that. Um, and honestly, up here, the same thing for part one. I had initially had a really freaking like absolute garbage looking adjacencies function. So um, don't feel bad that you had a pretty, that you've got, it, that you, that, that it was ugly. Um, so wait, do we actually have to cast this to a list? I don't think so. <laughs> Python's great. Um, so yeah, so the reason that you can do a yield from here, Kelly, is because this is a, this is like an implicit function, basically. This is like generator function. Okay, I love deleting code. Uh, I wish I had thought of that and wasn't retarded during the middle of the um, solve, but such is life. Okay, so uh this whole thing is the same except for except for this here and this additional rule um so everything else is the exact same i can actually pull in just this the same comment here um and replace all of this uh oh one key is using deep copy that's absolutely essential or else you're screwed um, cause you're going to be modifying what you're using. Yeah. So 
So what yield from does is it basically allows you to yield all like if you have if you have a list of things or an iterable of things, it yields each one of the things in the iterable uh, individually. So so the alternative I yield star Java script. What does yield star Java in JavaScript do? I think so. I believe I believe that's I the equivalent. An expression which uh, returns an iterable object yield star expression iterates over the operand and yields each value returned by it. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it's doing. Yield star g one. Yeah, and that'll yield one, two, three, four, five, right? Yeah. So it's basically yield star in JavaScript for those of you who are familiar with that. Let me zoom in so you can actually see yield star. So that's what yield from is doing. Um, so mm, I, I think that this is about as concise as I would make the step function because it's pretty good. You know, I do wish that I had thought of this, you know, an hour ago, that would have been nice. Or an hour and 10 minutes ago. Actually, I'm curious, like how fast did the leaderboard close today? Like, did, was it at least a, uh, no, wait, uh, 11. Okay, so it was a, it was a 15, it was a 14 minute problem. So it was over 10 minutes today, which I think is the first day that it's been over 10 minutes. Maybe day eight. Nah, day nine. Nah, they've been they've been pretty easy so far. Says me who totally failed at this one. Holy crap. Oh, okay, okay, so day seven was above 10 minutes before the leaderboard closed. Okay, I solved it an hour. Okay, so the the reason for this is just to make sure that you don't step the current one. You know, maybe no, yeah, this is this is about as clean as you can get. Or I mean, I'm sure there's better, but that's just, that's what I w I think is good enough. Um, so what's happening here? Um, so we go through each of one of the rays and then we just step the rays are going to return you a, each ray is going to be a generator, which will, which will return the indices of the cells along that ray. So it'll return all the indices above, below, etc. And if it's, if it's either occupied or or empty. So if it's a chair, if it's not a period, then break um, regardless. And if it also happens to be occupied, increment the number of occupied. Um, and then the, it's the same check. It's literally the same check except for greater than or equal to five. Very, very disappointing today. That was muy terrible and that's gonna really set me back uh quite a bit i'm pretty sure that jack beat me in haskell so that's kind of embarrassing yeah how did i lose to somebody writing this in haskell how's that even possible oh wait it's because i'm bad ah makes sense okay i think that's about it I think I've explained what's going on. I've cleaned it up. I don't know what there is to learn. I'm gonna, it was just disappointing across the board. I don't know, there, I, I can't really, like everything went wrong. Like nothing went right to be perfectly honest. Um, so so there, there uh, I, I don't know. I'll look back at stream and figure out what, if there's anything that I can glean from it, but thank you, um, McPanda. Thank you, ProLemur. Thank you to, thank you to BJ Sebastian as well. Thank you all for 
watching, hanging out and watching, uh, watching me burn. So I think I'm going to call it here. Thank you all. Um, this was not very much fun as far as the leaderboard went, but it was fun having a couple people here in chat cheering me on slash laughing at me. Um, if you want to join in the fun, I stream this on Twitch every evening, so you should come over, follow me over there, and then, yeah, I'll be at it again tomorrow for day 12. Let's hope that it goes literally any better than today. So um, thanks all for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you're on YouTube or on Twitch. I don't know. Can you actually do that on Twitch? I am so bad at Twitch. All right. Have a good one, everyone. See you.